um, we have the North Pole and the South Pole. Mm-hmm. And we've always known it that way. North Pole's north, South Pole's south. And so it is. But it may not have been that way forever, and there is significant scientific evidence, perhaps even conclusive, that there have been prior polar shifts. In other words, where north goes south and south goes north, right? That's right. Now. Absolutely. Now, how many times in our Earth's history do we think this has occurred? Well, it depends on the experts you you look at, but uh, from what we can gather, probably seven to eight times, they're just, I think partially they're guessing because of records, but it has happened a considerable number of times. From a biblical perspective, uh, there is at least probably two. I believe there was one before the creation of Adam and Eve Mm -hmm. that you'll find in, in Genesis, and then it appears as though uh, when the time of Noah's flood came, that that also may have incorporated at least a partial polar shift, if not a total one. And uh, then a very interesting event occurred in the days of Peleg, which occurred maybe 250 to 300 years after the flood, in which it says the earth was divided, and that would have been a gigantic earthquake, which, uh, according to the ancient records, set up the nations as we know them today. The continents? Did it actually change continental formations? I mean, all right, well, let's get down to it. What do we think occurs? Oh, God, so many questions. First of all, how quick would a polar reversal occur? Well, the actual polar reversal from what we can gain from the scriptures and from other documents, ancient documents, it occurs very rapidly, usually within a one-day period. So it, it occurs, uh, when it finally goes, a it one goes day extremely period. rapidly. A one-day period. Yes. And in one day, the North Pole goes to roughly the South Pole or some new location, and South goes to North. Yes. Okay, if that were to occur, what is our best guess about what would happen? Total destruction. Basically, it would depend on where you were on the Earth's surface at the time the shift occurred, the direction of the shift. Let's say, I, let's say I'm in Nevada. Uh, I would think from the prophecies you'd be in a lot of trouble. Well, what, what, what do you I mean? I think everybody in the United States of America is going to be in a lot of trouble. Because a shift... Define trouble. Uh, destruction. You mean dead? Death, Yes. Yes. Well, uh, what would kill us? Well, let me just quote you from Isaiah, for example. Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty, and maketh it waste, yep. and turneth it upside down, and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. Okay, translate that into what that might mean scientifically. Well, scientifically, that would mean that in a very short period of time, the North Pole becomes the South Pole right. and actually probably goes beyond it. Sure. Because... Uh, no, but I mean effects. When that happened, what... Total destruction. By what means? By means of, uh, well, shall we say, outside, almost outer space, cold coming down to the surface. Oh. The scriptures indicate a tremendous roll cloud develops. If you've seen uh, major squall lines, you've seen these roll clouds. Oh, listen, brother, I used to I used to chase them. All right. I, ch- I well, chased them and, uh, looking for tornadoes. So yes, I'm extremely familiar with a roll cloud. Okay, now multiply that roll cloud by a tremendous margin because what happens is the surface of the Earth changes directions rapidly, but the atmosphere above it does not. Wait a minute, the surface of the Earth changes directions right in a shift uh the the earth is tilted at approximately 22.5 23.5 degrees right all right now when a shift occurs right that tilt the, the earth the north pole starts to slide to the south now as it slides to the south it is fairly solid so the crustal the part of the earth just simply slides but the Earth, or the atmosphere, does not 
catch up with it. It doesn't just move with oh, it. Oh, my God. You know, I once had somebody on here talking about polar shift, and he said there would be 800 mile per hour winds. Oh, I would think probably at least that, probably even more. And so if I just heard you correctly, you're saying the Earth's surface would move, but the atmosphere wouldn't. The net effect, though, would be atmosphere moving by us or us actually by, uh, it wouldn't make any difference the net effect would be stupendous winds yes yes in fact it would the atmosphere would actually begin to roll back as the surface of the earth accelerates in the shift My. because the atmosphere cannot keep up with it it begins to roll back and it creates a huge vacuum area for the first time i understand this and then air from the outer space comes down because it's super cold, and you have instant freeze of anything that happened to be there that would... I take it you mean actually upper atmosphere, yes. uh, the, the very thinner, very cold upper atmosphere. Yes. Anybody who's ever been at an, uh, in an airplane, uh, one of the recent 747s, when you look at the outside temperature and you're only at like 40,000 feet, the outside temperature is like minus... 80 minus 90 degrees typically. Yeah, it gets pretty chilly up there. That, that, just that far up. So uh, further up in the atmosphere, of course, it's. Um, <laughs> if that were to suddenly come down. Well, you have instant freeze, which probably explains the uh, uh, findings in Siberia and whatnot. You mean the, uh, the vegetation in the woolly mammoths? Yes. I, yes. Uh, uh, instant freeze. They were quick frozen in a split second. The only thing that would do that is super cold air uh, approaching, you know, because of wind chill factors. And it would have to be very fast. Oh, instantaneous. They would never know what hit them. Nobody would know what hit them. Huh. There will be warning signs. Like what? Well, we're already getting the warning signs. We're seeing changes in, in the weather patterns. Uh, the patterns are getting more and more violent. Uh, Boy, I'll tell you, there's no question about that. I think we are, we're in the preliminary stages of a polar shift. Of a polar shift. Now, you know, let me tell you a little story. This is a true story. I could read it because I've got it here somewhere, but I know it by heart. The Fujita scale of tornadoes actually goes to 12, but that's just an academic study. Mm -hmm. um, on Earth, in our atmosphere, it is impossible to have any, the scientists say anyway, meteorologists, impossible to have anything greater than what's called an F5 tornado at 318 miles per hour. Now, that's exactly what we had, was 318 miles per hour. That is the top, the very tip top of the F5 scale. At 319, which, by the way, they think they might have actually had, you would have an F6. And they say that's impossible. And yet, it occurred, and everybody who's been watching the weather maps knows the horrendous, horrendous uh, tornado season that we've, we've had. And you're saying this is a harbinger. Yes, absolutely. In fact, it's going to increase tremendously. Then there's one more thing, and I've been dealing with this on my show now for two years. So I'll tell you about it, and you can tell me if it means anything, Stuart, but... From time to time, I will suddenly start getting all these emails and faxes, and people will start saying to me, Hey, Art, guess what? My compass is suddenly deviating anywhere between 8 to 15 degrees west. And it's freaky. It's like the pole is wandering a little bit, and then it comes back. Mm-hmm. Well... A magnetic pole shift probably will precede the actual literal pole shift. When the magnetic pole shift and go into, I guess, what you could call a dipolar reversal, there is a period of time in which the magnetic field actually collapses, according to the scientists that have studied this. In other words, goes to zero. Goes to zero. During that time, of course, you have... Uh, all the lethal rays from the sun, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Your uh, and nothing, audio mass ejections and all that. Nothing, are to, nothing to protect you from them, right? That's right, because it's the magnetic field that actually does most of the protecting. Which is one of the reasons why your satellites and or manned uh, satellites are below the Van Allen belt because they're protected by the 
Van Allen belt itself from the more lethal rays of the sun. So if suddenly it went to zero, in essence, we would be immediately, particularly if it's a bad uh, solar cycle time, which, by the way, we happen to be coming up on, Yes. a solar maximum, they say, perhaps within the next year, uh, you would then be wide open to a coronal mass ejection that could flip the poles? Yes. Well, I don't know if it would actually literally create the polar shift, but it could certainly rearrange the magnetic poles uh, tremendously. And there are some uh, scientists that have done some research on this, and they claim that when the poles go to zero, mm -hmm. that it has tremendous effects upon the Earth, great shaking of the Earth, and then it reorientates itself, and, and the, the North Pole becomes the South Pole, etc., etc. Stuart, I have a fellow I interview from time to time named Major Ed Dames from SciTech, which is a remote viewing organization. He has remote viewed uh, something that he calls a kill shot from the sun, and it sounds an awful lot like what you're talking about. Could well be. I, there's no question that the sun is involved in this because the time of the polar shift, according to the scriptures, and the time of a sola nova are the same. Uh, the Bible indicates in the Old Testament that the moon will give off the light of the sun, and the sun will give off seven times the light it has now. Now, that can only be described as a mini nova. You know, it's interesting you should mention this, because I've been reading these stories just in the last few days about scientists seeing these suns go into this apparent nova condition a lot lately. I mean, they've got all kinds of new information about it, and if other suns can do it, I mean, we, our sun is not that unusual. That's right. It could do it too, couldn't it? It not only could, according to the prophecies, it will. And uh, actually, uh, the way the Lord worded it, he said the, the heavens will be shaken, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. In other words, things sort of go off from their normal course. The book of Enoch says the moon shall change its laws and not be seen for its proper period. Would anybody on earth live through such an event? Yes, there are survivors. According to the scriptures, there are survivors. Well, not many. How about are. scientifically? I, I, I don't uh, in any way put down the scriptures, and I realize you're coming at this from a Christian perspective, which is fine. But scientifically, if what you suggest occurred, occurred, mm -hmm. how would anybody live? I think, again, it would depend on your location upon the planet in relationship to the spin of the, um, of the polar shift itself. In other words, if you were in an area where you are sort of in the pivot area, probably not a whole lot would happen to you. But those on the outside of the shift, oh. you see, would, would have tremendous damage. Oh, I absolutely do see. In other words, inside you would hardly feel the motion. Outside you'd be thrown from here to Kalamazoo. Yes. All right, hold on, Stuart. Stuart Best is my guest, and we'll be right back.